and welcome back to the Quarry Gardener on another windy day. It's the first chance I've had to get out here in over a week. It's been horrendous the weather here, one storm after another. But I've managed to get out early today and I've been tweaking this um, wall basket. I've added two skimmias in the top and I've added some white primulas, primroses around the side here. It was looking a bit drab, a bit dried up. And the grasses have done really well. The original primroses are just growing back and starting to flower. The hookah is not so much. They've um, shriveled up and dried out. They haven't done well at all in all of these winds that we've had. But euphorias are doing well. So hopefully it should last now till the end of May. Once the wrens have finished using it, they're sleeping here every night. There's several large holes in the bottom of the basket. And I would imagine they'll go on to nest in here in the spring. Um, but yeah, quite happy with that. It's starting to look a little bit brighter. But now let's get on and build some pots. The first two pots that I'm going to uh, make are for either side of the front door. And um, they're going to be quite simple spring pots. I've got um, two willows and some primulas, primroses. Um, the willows are Salix, 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 Salix Kilmarnock is, is the variety. Um, it's just coming out now, look at that, how pretty are they? So the theme I've gone for is to match the front of the house, which you can actually do if, if you like a colourful pot, obviously go for reds, yellows, um, blues, especially this time of year because you've got a lot of primroses, purple, violets. I like to match it with the white of the house, with the white windows and doors, so I'm sticking to a white theme. So I've got two pots, um, got crocks in the bottom, they've got holes in the bottom because they're plastic pots and they're going to need to be, um, they're going to be in here for quite some time, these um, small trees. So I've got good quality compost, um, I filled it half up so far. And I'll just put the pot in. You can see I've actually already removed the plastic um, pot that it was in because it was really root bound. I had to actually cut it out. And all you could see is the roots there. So that's good. So it's already teased the roots out for itself. And I'll stand it in there like that. Make sure I'm quite happy with it. Slightly on an angle. So I'll just turn it like that because this will be the front. Um, yeah, quite like that. So I'm going to fill in now with compost. Obviously you want to try and keep it to the same height as it was in the pot. You don't want to have it any higher than that. And always try to take, um, leave about an inch to two inches at the top of the um, pot for watering and that sort of thing. So just fill it in like that. Press it down, make it secure. That's pretty good. And then just take your primulas or your plant of choice. So I've gone with this lovely white. It's called Alaska White Orange. Alaska White Orange Eye, very pretty. So we'll just take those out. Obviously, if you're in an area where you suffer badly with very cold weather, very cold frosts, um, these are all winter hardy plants. But if you're obviously expecting heavy frost and heavy snows, might be wise to delay doing this. It's pretty mild here all the time in this part of the country. So I'm pretty fortunate in that respect that I can start off this time of year planting quite early. Not many other places can do that. So I'm just going to fill these all the way around like that. We'll put them in place first before we actually cover them over with soil just to make sure I can actually squeeze them all in. It can be quite rough with these bedding plants um, whenever I do pots and baskets. You can be quite damn rough with them. Do that one along a little bit. They don't mind being squashed and squeezed. As you can see, it's pretty basic. 
but it'll do the job to give some lovely colour and brightness for the front of the house. Because boy do we need it this time of year. Everywhere is grey and drab. And last one, round the side here. Move that one along a bit. Oop. Just put that right. Just see if you're happy with it before you actually fill it up with soil. And do you know I'm going to put another one in the middle there. I'll just get one more. Hmm. Do I need it? Do I not? don't know because once they start to grow you got to remember that these type of plants you won't have them in at least I won't have them in the pot that long they'll only be there until I do this um, the summer displays oh, I quite like that I'm gonna leave that like it is so just fill in with the compost that you've got Put to one side. Make sure they're pressed down. A little bit more compost. Good wearing glasses because these are quite spiky actually but there you go one very simple pot for outside the front door so what i'll do now is i'll just make the other one up that one to one side i'll clean the pot up and make the other one So these are the next two pots that I'm going to um, redo. I built these back in December for Christmas um, with winter greens and I had Christmas decorations in them both originally. And they look really good either side of the door. I really liked them. I had some Christmas lights around them as well. But I think it's time for a change now. And um, I'm going to um, build them again, but this time with some spring bedding and some spring bulbs. I may use some willow as well. I may experiment with that. Don't know, we'll see how it goes. So I'll take them apart first and then I'll show you what I'm going to add. Okay, that's the... Um, pots cleared now of all the old winter greens. I've um, added some compost into the soil that was already in there. It's good quality soil. It's, um, I lifted a turf lawn a few years ago and I actually folded all of the turf in on itself in a big pile and it's made the most gorgeous soil. Anyhow, I've added some um, compost for these um, plants and this winter um sorry the um star of the shore will be this hellebore 
which is part of the gold collection. UK grown, it's called Jessie, and I love these hellebores. I'm a real hellebore uh, collector, as you can probably tell if you've watched any of my previous vlogs. I've got some um, white primroses, primulas, and some um, hyacinths, some tete a tet um, daffodils. I uh, don't quite know, a couple of heathers, don't know what I'm going to add yet. I've got some um, willow, which I bought back in, the, back in January from the local supermarket, which I've dried out in a vase in the house. May use that. May try something different with that. Don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'll put you on a time lapse. I'll build the pot and then I'll show you the end result. to give you a close-up of the primroses and they're in the pots with the two small Kilmarnock willow trees that are just coming in the catkins are just coming out just coming into flower there's one either side of the door the two pots that I completed and the trees will stay in here for a few years and then they'll need either bigger pots or I'll plant them in the, the garden somewhere but it's a nice problem to have I don't mind that at all and then you've got the two pots with the hellebores in. I've played around with the willow stems. This is more me the way I've got them now. It's more of a contemporary design. I prefer that. Look at those though. Oh wow. Just, oh, how can you not fall in love with hellebores? Especially these white ones. They're just gorgeous. And the teddy tets are just in the background there. And obviously there's quite a few more spring rolls to come. So they can only get better. And then just on the wall there is the wall basket with the white primroses in and primulas. Just brightening up that area. But I love that. How pretty is that? Well that's it for today. So from a very windy Northumberland, I'll say bye for now and I'll see you soon.